Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Amos 8.11 Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that it will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Even worse than a famine of physical food is a famine of spiritual food. Because Israel rejected the prophets, God promised a severe judgment. Just as Israel rejected the prophets, the church today is rejecting God's word. How tragic! to turn a deaf ear to God and be given a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. The Bible indicates that there will be a great apostasy during the end times, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Falling away is the Greek word apostasia, which means defection from the truth, properly the state, apostasy. Apostasia, from which we get the English word apostasy, refers to a general defection from the true God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. Jesus warned the disciples concerning the final days, as we read in Matthew 24, 10 through 12. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. These are the characteristics of the great apostasy of the end times. By looking at the news headlines of our world today, there can be no doubt we are living in the final moments before Jesus' return. You may have heard the phrase, God's hand of protection. It seems that it is something God would do, keep a person or nation in the shelter of his hand. But what happens to a nation when it decides to disobey God's laws? In America's case, it's not that God has lifted his hand of protection. It's that America has left God's hand of protection. When God led the Israelites out of bondage, he commanded them to teach their children all he had done for them, as we read in Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, God desired that the generations to come would continue to uphold all his commands. When one generation fails to instill God's laws in the next, a society quickly declines. Parents have not only a responsibility to their children, but an assignment from God to impart his values and truth into their lives. God tells us what happens if we forget his law in Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. Because America has rejected God's knowledge and forgotten his law, it seems as though God has forgotten our children. American preteens are on their way to abandoning biblical Christianity. According to the Cultural Research Center, only 21% believe turning to the Bible is the best way to determine right from wrong. Christian researcher George Barna says children age 8 to 12 years are in jeopardy of abandoning core beliefs of a biblical worldview. When we look at what they believe about the Bible, what they believe about absolute truth, about 
the means to eternal salvation, about how to define and pursue success and the purpose of life, in all of those areas, they're not doing well. And when we compare them to teenagers and young adults, in other words, if we backtrack in terms of age groups, we find that today's young children are doing worse than their predecessors. And we already know that their predecessors are, uh, do not have a biblical worldview. So we're looking at a young group of people that is not moving toward thinking like Jesus, which is important because that's the only way that eventually you're going to be able to act like Jesus because you do what you believe. What's the cause then, George, of this biblical abandonment for preteens? There's no single cause that we can point to, but there are a number of things that certainly contribute to that. One of those would be the enduring and negative impact of media messages upon children. The media continue to be the most impactful source of worldview development in our country. Secondly, we can look at the fact that only 4% of parents have a biblical worldview. They don't perceive themselves as being the ones who are responsible for developing the worldview of their children. Thirdly, we can look at the fact that most Christian churches these days neither prioritize children in ministry nor focus on worldview development when they have the attention of children within the church environment. So you add those and a few other things together, what the church, excuse me, what the schools are doing, the influence of peers and so forth. And so it's a big turnaround that's got to happen. And parents need to be leading that turnaround but it's not foremost in their minds to do so. Well, I was going to say, I'm sure you weren't surprised by these results because I know you've discussed this for quite a few years now about this trend of adults moving away from the Christian faith, declining church attendance, decline in moral clarity, biblically-based principles. What should our churches and parents do then about this? Well, recognize that disciples make disciples and that it's the parents' primary responsibility to be helping their child to become a disciple, but also recognizing that as the chief discipler of their children, they've got to invest in the relationship, they've got to understand that their own behavior is huge in this process. So they've got to be a great role model when we look at what they believe about the Bible, what they believe about absolute truth. Is there such a thing as absolute truth? The unsaved, hold the view there is no right or wrong. Therefore, whatever feels or seems right at the time and in that situation is right. Christians hold the view that there are indeed absolute realities and standards that define what is true and what is not. To the unsaved, tolerance has become the one cardinal virtue of the postmodern society, the one absolute, and therefore, intolerance is the only evil. Any dogmatic belief, especially a belief in absolute truth, is viewed as intolerance, the ultimate sin to an unbeliever. If there is absolute truth, then there are absolute standards of right and wrong, and we are accountable to those standards. This accountability is what people are really rejecting when they reject absolute truth. The denial of absolute truth and the cultural relativism that comes with it are the logical result of a society that has embraced the theory of evolution as the explanation for life. If evolution is true, then life has no meaning, we have no purpose, and there cannot be any absolute right or wrong. Man is then free to live as he pleases and is accountable to no one for his actions. Yet, no matter how much sinful men deny the existence of God and absolute truth, they still will someday stand before God in judgment. The Bible declares this in Romans 1, 19 through 22, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Is there any evidence for the existence of absolute truth? Yes. There is the human conscience, that certain something within us that tells us the world should be a certain way, that some things are right and some things are wrong. Our conscience convinces us there is something wrong with suffering, pain, and evil, and it makes us aware that love, 
generosity, compassion, and peace are positive things for which we should strive. The Bible describes the role of the human conscience as we read in Romans 2, 14 through 16. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do the things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves, who show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves, their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, God has revealed his truth to us through his word, the Bible. Knowing absolute truth is only possible through a personal relationship with the one who claims to be the truth, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life, and the only path to God. The fact that absolute truth does exist points us to the truth that there is a sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth and who has revealed himself to mankind in order that we might know him personally through his son, Jesus Christ. That is the absolute truth. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. Something that should have been a fun celebration has left Kansas City and the nation heartbroken. What a scene that was. Many of the witnesses we spoke to in Kansas City told us they thought they were hearing fireworks when the gunshots went off. Fans who gathered in the city with their families were forced to shift into panic mode. One hospital, Children's Mercy, is treating 12 patients from the rally. 11 are children. Nine of the 12 have gunshot wounds. At least one person we know was killed. Kansas City radio DJ Lisa Lopez Galvan. Three people were detained, and police are still trying to piece together what happened. The Bible condemns murder repeatedly as a characteristic of a wicked society and places a person in danger of the judgment, as we read in Matthew 5.21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. You can see this is an active crime scene and investigators are still here. Now the rally had just ended. Players were exiting the stage when suddenly the terrifying chaos began. This morning, an investigation underway after a day of celebration turned deadly. Gunshots erupting in a crowd of nearly a million people outside Union Station in Kansas City. They're celebrating the Chiefs' Super Bowl win. Such a joyous moment for the city and the bringing everyone together. And then in a split second, it's all ruined. 21 people shot, one person killed. The ordeal unfolding Wednesday afternoon, just as the Chiefs victory rally was ending. <laughs> Terrified fans running for their lives, jumping barriers. I was standing watching the stage and the shots were fired and then everybody just started running. All of a sudden it sounded like fireworks and we're like, oh, okay. And then my daughter yelled, get down, get down. Roughly 800 members of law enforcement were present, all rushing to the scene as police snipers scanned the crowd from rooftops. That fatal victim, identified as Kansas City radio host Lisa Lopez Galvan, a local DJ and mother of two. Today in Kansas City was a day to celebrate. We woke up this morning excited and the last thing we ever expected was to have a tragedy in our family. Her brother, Beto Lopez, talking to GMA overnight. This is another example of a real loving, real human whose life was taken tragically with a senseless act. With the horrible mass shootings taking place weekly in the United States, we need to answer the question, why do mass shootings keep happening in America? What does this meaningless violence mean? Will it get worse and worse as the time of Christ's return draws near? If we think that things are going to get better and that mankind will solve this problem for less violence, we are fooling ourselves. The Bible indicates otherwise. 
The simple answer to why do mass shootings keep happening in America is, God is being expelled from the essence of American society. Through Supreme Court decisions starting in 1962, God is being expelled from America. 1962, Engel v. Vitale. The removal of prayer in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1963, Abington School District v. Shump. The removal of Bible reading in public schools by the Supreme Court. 1973, Roe v. Wade. Legalized abortions by the Supreme Court. Although Roe v. Wade was overturned by the Supreme Court on June 24, 2022, there have been over 60 million abortions in the United States. 2013, United States v. Windsor. The Supreme Court struck down the Defense of Marriage Act. DOMA stated that one man should be married to one woman. DOMA is biblically supported according to Genesis 2.24, which says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and he shall become one flesh. 2015, Overfell v. Hodges, the Supreme Court case that ruled in favor of same-sex marriages. Contrary to the Lord's commands, America has made it illegal to teach about God and to pray to Him in public schools. America has made it legal to murder unborn children and has legalized homosexuality in the form of God's sacred institution, marriage. Police detaining three people of interest and recovering at least one firearm. Right now we do not have a motive, um, but we are asking those who may potentially have any kind of information, a witness or video to contact police. And this morning, harrowing stories from brave bystanders, Paul Contreras and Trey Filter, seen in this video taking down a man believed to be a suspect as he fled the scene. I didn't hesitate, it was just, just do it. So I went to go tackle him and another gentleman did the same thing. The heroes restraining that person until officers arrived, this video capturing officers subduing him. I just feel we did what was the right thing, what we had to do. Among those shot, several children, some as young as six. The one word I would just use to describe what we saw and how they felt when they came to us was fear. The chiefs confirming no players or staff were injured. Three D.C. police officers are now recovering after being shot this morning. The Metropolitan Police Department says it happened in southeast D.C. It comes as the nation's capital deals with a sharp rise in violent crime. Lucas Tomlinson joins us live from the scene. Lucas, uh, what do you see? What do you hear? Well, Aisha, this all began at 7.30 this morning, about seven hours ago, when three D.C. police officers went to serve a search warrant for animal cruelty. They were met by gunfire. Three officers were shot, taken to local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries, and the police chief, Pamela Smith, just spoke to us, said they are in good spirits. The mayor visited also. A fourth officer was also injured. And here's some more from Pamela Smith's press conference. Our officers attempted to make contact with the individual inside the resident in order to execute the arrest warrant. The individual refused to come outside. As officers attempted to gain injury, enter, entry, the individual fired upon them. A barricade has been declared in this particular incident. Our officers were struck by gunfire, three of our officers to be exact. All three have been transported with non-life-threatening injuries to our local area hospitals. Last year, D.C. saw a 35% spike in homicides, a 25-year high, and only about half those murder cases were solved. Carjackings have doubled in the past year. U.S. attorney in D.C. declined to prosecute 67% of those arrested. A migrant Venezuelan crew is praying on New Yorkers, robbing 62 victims over the past two months, including this woman. The ring has members living in migrant shelters, accessing the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. Robbers using scooters or mopeds to sneak up on victims, almost always targeting women, then using scooters for a quick getaway. Welcome to Biden's America, indeed. A brutal Venezuelan gang is using our open borders to now set up shop in New York. Trend Arawa was started by a convict in a prison and is now Venezuela's largest gang. According to The Economist, the gang runs a human trafficking empire. Tonight, there are new fears that they're forming a dangerous alliance with another vicious gang, MS-13. Joining me now is Derek Maltz, former DEA special ops director. Derek, I know you're very familiar with both of these gangs. Americans watching might not know the lingo here, but how dangerous is this? These are like some of the most powerful gangs in the world. They're emerging. They're growing. If you look what's going on in El Salvador now, the president, who was just reelected, he has a very tough-on-crime stance. 
So MS-13 gang members, they don't want to go to prison in El Salvador. He's got terror prisons. There's like 100 inmates in one cell, and they don't want to be in that cell because it's a deterrent. So they're coming to America, and they're coming here, and these Venezuelan groups that are very experienced in extortion, in killings, in, you know, in robberies, in, you know, drug trafficking, they're coming here because they're taking advantage of the wide-open border, the weaknesses and vulnerabilities in this country, and, of course, President Biden's soft-on-crime policies. The Venezuelan gang, Tren La Agua, is also in Chicago and is committing brutal acts of violence of keeping its alliance together in Chicago. And, again, people might think some of these robberies are one-offs, but these are highly organized you know, mini cartels of criminals who are operating with mopeds and, and all the merchandise, we understand, is, go, is going to central locations and then being, you know, the proceeds of that being shipped out back to, back to the home base. We were on a while ago regarding retail crime theft, which is exploding in America as well, because these criminals don't feel any fear. They know they're not going to stay in jail, so they, it's worth the risk. And, you know, these, these Venezuelan gangs are super experienced. Like you said, they're very organized. They're very structured. They're recruiting people as well in America to join their gang. I mean, this, this is real, real stuff happening, and people are terrified. In D.C., they're terrified. They're terrified in New York, L.A., Oakland. The list goes on and on, obviously, Chicago. The Apostle Paul, in his epistle to Timothy, tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Serious national security threat. It involves Russia's plan to put a nuclear weapon in space. The head of the House Intelligence Committee warned of an impending threat. Alarm bells were sounding throughout Washington, and once we found out just what the threat was, they rang even louder. This morning, startling new intelligence on a potential threat from space. Sources telling ABC News that the U.S. believes Russia is working on plans to position a nuclear weapon in space, a blatant violation of multiple international agreements. The intended target, not Earth, but the critical satellite circling around it, vital for communications and military operations. Moscow's military ambitions coming to light after the Republican head of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner, sent shockwaves through Washington by cryptically urging the Biden administration to declassify intelligence about what he described only as a serious national security threat. The White House caught off guard. Lawmakers on the Hill also tight-lipped, but some, including the top Republican in the House, trying to ease concern. I want to assure the American people there is no need for public alarm. We are going to work together to address this matter. Steady hands are at the wheel. We're working on it, and there's no need for alarm. Russia's space program has fallen behind countries like the U.S., China, and even India. So experts say Moscow is likely trying to gain an advantage. But that is still cause for concern because it's proof of how far Putin is willing to go. The idea of catastrophic space terrorism blowing up, you know, billions of dollars investments in low Earth orbit, we, we think that's not credible. We think that's crazy. And uh, but unfortunately, uh, the Russians and other folks are willing to do the kinds of things that we uh, think is unthinkable. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Tensions are at an all time high in northern Israel after a vicious Hezbollah rocket attack. Israeli warplanes struck back, hitting multiple military targets in Lebanon. Meanwhile, hostage negotiations have broken down again in the wake of what Prime Minister Netanyahu is calling delusional demands from Hamas. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has more. 
Israel pounded Hezbollah targets in southern Lebanon after a Hezbollah rocket barrage killed a female Israeli soldier and wounded nine others Wednesday. Reports from Lebanon say 16 were killed there. We are not finishing this without returning the residents to Metula and all the communities in the north with a very high level of security. Some 80,000 Israelis evacuated their homes in the north four months ago. IDF Chief of Staff Hertia Levy says Israel's goal is to push Hezbollah back from the border and stop the attacks and will go to war if necessary. In the city of Khan Yunis in Gaza, Israeli forces carried out an operation against Nasser Hospital today, citing credible intelligence that Hamas had held captives there and their bodies might still be inside. Talks to free the hostages broke down again, with the State Department calling some Hamas demands non-starters. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu cited the dramatic rescue of two hostages earlier this week. This is also the key to the release of most of our hostages, strong military pressure and very firm negotiations. Meanwhile, former captives and relatives of hostages held by Hamas visited the International Criminal Court in The Hague. They want prosecutors to charge and arrest Hamas leaders. We're hoping for justice uh, after October 7. We feel that there is no justice. The Hamas people, they hurt us. They murder us. They kidnap us. They rape us. We're here to make a justice. In Washington, second gentleman Douglas Emoff, who is Jewish, co-hosted an event to raise awareness of Hamas's sexual violence against Israeli women on October 7th. Torture, genital mutilation, butchery, leaving women after they've been raped and tortured to die on the in a ditch, all while you you. See the images of Hamas terrorists laughing and bragging about it. This happened. This happened to these women. This happened. Yesterday, the House of Representatives overwhelmingly approved a resolution condemning rape and sexual violence by Hamas in its war against Israel. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance 
is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.